everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna dye a double stranded sock blank in some kind of whimsical colorway. I am not going for something that is more of a gradient. We are gonna apply our colors a little bit randomly, but there will still be some asymmetry to the final blank. The double stranded sock blank we are gonna use today is Platinum Sock from Wool to Dye For. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And two strands of this fingering weight sock yarn are knit together to form this piece of fabric. So that way when we dye it whatever kind of random and whimsical colorway we choose to create, the blank can be unraveled for say a matched pair of socks or for some kind of symmetrical project. But the goal, or really, I guess the plan, whenever you are dyeing a sock blank, is not to use the blank as the finished product, but to take the blank and unravel it and see what kind of fun colorway we ended up with. That being said, a lot of the techniques that I do on sock blanks could also be used on finished knit or crochet objects. So this is a technique you could do on a hat or a pair of socks uh, to get random whimsical color placement. It's just there where you see the dye is where the dye will end up and here we'll end up with a variegated yarn and maybe with some white. We'll see. I don't even know what colors I'm going to use yet. And so uh, yeah there's some differences there. Um, so if it's a finished object what you see when you're dying is what you're going to get. But with a blank you don't really know what you're gonna get until you unravel it and knit with it. And so that's part of the fun. Before I go and pre-soak the yarn, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Ellen Kravietz. Ellen, thank you so much for being my lab partner. And let's go dye the sock blank. I am pre-soaking our sock blank in some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. So it's just well saturated before we go and set up our dye bath and Pick out what colors we want to use. In my dye bath, we have some leftover water that has a fair amount of acid in it already. But we are going to create something just very whimsical with our blank today. And so I'm not that worried about the amount of acid or anything really, because we're going to add colors and let them sort of spread and do their thing. But what I do want to do is open up the blank a bit. It's, since it's stockinette, there's some curling going on, which is totally fine. You're not going to be able to prevent all of that. But then I don't really want, I don't mind if it's like bunched up a bit, but I would like there to feel like a little bit more random with that. But it is a fair amount of water in here. So I'm going to heat, let this heat up and get nice and hot. And then we will come and start adding some colors to it. And so I'll wait and talk about the colors while we're adding them onto the yarn. But while we are working with dry dye powders, I will be wearing a deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, so that way I don't inhale any dye. And I do have a yarn mop on hand that is some yarn that was soaked in water with vinegar that I've been using for a lot of projects today to just wipe my fingers onto, and so I will be using that uh, today as well. Okay, the pan is warm, but not hot. So I'm actually going to turn up the heat a little bit, but we're going to start adding some colors on. And I'm going to start with some sage leaf. And I'm sort of just taking it, and it's not that I'm going for speckles necessarily. These colors are going to spread, but we're just adding it on just a little bit randomly. We're going for something just whimsical and fun. I do want to make sure, even as I like wipe my fingers on this yarn mop, I want to make sure that my glove fingertips are dry before I go into a dye container because I don't want to introduce moisture into these jars. Okay, next up is Peach Blush. The colors we're using today do have some brightness to some of them, but uh, they also are a little bit more pastel. And so the blanks will also introduce some like cool resist into them and things like that. And so we're really just randomly going on. But 
we're not creating, say, a full gradient. There's asymmetry with more green here, more orange there. But it's not going to be like perfect distribution of every color throughout. So this is now baby blue eyes, which is a blue I adore. Adding a fair amount of that. And, you know, and we may come back in and add more of some of these colors as we decide we want them. But this is the palette that I'm playing with. I just really wanted to randomly add colors onto a blank uh, because it's been a while since I've done something like this. I may end up grabbing a fifth color, but for now, let's do some hyacinth. Um, this is a color I really, really like. And it may take a little bit of time to dissolve. This is a color that sometimes almost feels like it disappears. So we'll see what that's going to do. But you can see it's, it's slowly starting to uh, pop in. But I do think, yeah, I think I want a little pink. I'm going to grab a little bit of some Valentine blush. And to like tie things in, I'm having some like small bits of, of it all over, but like mostly in the middle. Let's add some of it here. Just for funsies. Did I really just say funsies? I think I did. <laughs> okay, and now looking at this, the color I want more of is some of the sage leaf. So I'm going to come in and add more of this in some of these areas. Not a lot, but just a bit. Uh, there's probably going to be a fair amount of white on this blank, but I'm having fun just applying these colors very randomly onto the blank. And I think I'm also going to do a little bit more peach blush. There's some areas where I'm like, a little bit of it would be fine, but I also wouldn't mind if we had a little bit more of it in some of those areas. But yeah, how is that for something just like really whimsical and fun? So anyway, <laughs> now I'm going to want to let this sit and heat for about 30 minutes. But technically, I don't have 30 minutes. I have 15 minutes before I have to go pick up the kids from school. So what I'm going to do is leave this with the heat on for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to turn off the heat, unplug the hot plate so it's unplugged, um, let it sit while I get the kids from school, and then when I get back home, I will turn the heat back on to heat for another 15 minutes. So we will have that 30 minutes of heat. Uh, but logistically, this is how I'm going about it today. The second round of 15 minutes is up, so I'm turning off the heat, and I am going to set this aside. Ooh, look at that. Um, there's a little bit of staining on the pan or color that hasn't absorbed, I don't know. But I'm going to set this aside to cool completely and then we can wash the blank and, well, let's move in a moment here. Ooh! See how fun? Oh, this is super fun. It's, a, it's pretty muted, but it's still just like random and I'm excited. Let's wash our sock blank. And I've got some water that, I mean, there's not really much soap in here at this stage. There'll be a little bit uh, more in a moment. But this is really, really fun. Now, the colors that I picked are more, even though there's some brights, they're more muted than bright. So when they combine with each other, they are a little bit less bright. I mean, they're not like neon or anything like that. I'm now going to add a tiny bit of dish soap. Um, you definitely could have done this with a couple more blanks, but it was fun to really randomize the placement so that way the yarn will be variegated throughout the whole project, so that the proportion of the different colors will change throughout the scene, and that's just 
a whole lot of fun. But the soap, I think I want to get a different soap. The soap suds a lot, but let's see. I'm not seeing color bleeding, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the soap, put the blank through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and take a much closer look at it. Here is the finished sock blank. I love the combination of these muted colors together. And editing Rebecca will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we used flamingo pink, peach blush, sage leaf, baby blue eyes, and hyacinth, which gives sort of like a muted, soft rainbow palette to start with. But applying these in a much more random way to create this sort of asymmetric, non-repeating, variegated and speckled colorway is a lot of fun. And I really just enjoy the process of throwing the dyes on. Now, the thing about this that is extra fun is that this is a double-stranded sock blank. And so when it's unraveled, you get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn. So you could use this and create something repeating, um, or you could create you know, matched socks, but you could also use it to create something symmetrical. If you work one of the skeins one way, and then you'd have to separate them first, but then you work the other skein the reverse way, you could add symmetry to it. So if you're doing a sideways like shawl or wrap kind of thing, that could be really, really fun to do. But I wanted to intentionally move the colors around more and not create, say, a gradient. Because blanks are great for doing sort of variegated gradients, and I have examples of rainbow ones and things that I've done in the past. But here, we're gonna start with like more green and then get less and less green as it moves through. And there will be more and more of the pink and orange as you move through as well. And so the colors are somewhat present throughout a lot of it, which brings in some balance. But there is that, again, a symmetry there because of the way that the colors are layered. We applied the dye as dry powder to the blank, and we didn't really do much to work it through. There was plenty of water in the pan, and so we did see spread of the colors. Yes, there are some areas that are a little bit more white that you can see on the reverse side, but you see a lot of the other colors coming through. And I really like uh, the way that some of the colors pulled based on how the yarn was wrinkled. These are ones that were probably lower down, so they got a little bit more pigment. Those, those kinds of lines just amuse me. Now, within some of these sections, we absolutely have speckles both from the application of the dye itself and the way that some of the colors break, but also because of the fact that we're dyeing a knit piece of fabric. And so if we open it up, you can see some of the reverse speckling there. So you have color on the right side and color on the wrong side, but in between that yarn that was held together by those stitches, we have less pigment. So when this is unraveled, that will be another element to it, and you'll see some variation and modeling and mixing of the colors, which will bring a lot of depth to the finished project, whatever you choose to make with this type of yarn. There are a lot of people that don't like that kind of modeling from sock blanks, especially when it comes to gradients. They prefer more smooth color transitions. And so for something like that, you'd be better off dyeing connected mini skeins or something similar to that versus dyeing up a sock blank in some kind of more gradient kind of pattern because then you wouldn't be dealing with the resists. Of course, you could make your own sock blanks and do it at a looser gauge so that way there is less resist uh, between the way the stitches are together. So there are ways to get less of those resist points from blanks, but I'm personally someone who loves to embrace the differences that you see using different techniques. So in this case, that might be taking advantage of the asymmetry that you can get, um, embracing the modeling that we'll see when we unravel this. Or when using certain dyes like the sage leaf, the fact that it breaks through speckling and so you get different colors in there. I enjoy embracing that. 
Um, but I do know that different fiber artists, whether you knit, crochet, weave, dye, whatever spin, whatever craft you do, people have different preferences when it comes to colors and the type of colorways. And that is all absolutely okay. And actually that's a huge reason why I film so many different types of videos using different techniques, different dye colors, different bases. So that way you can watch the content and get a sense of what things you think you may like. And so then you know what kind of techniques you may want to go and play around with for yourself. Uh, I'll sometimes say I like to take risks so you don't have to. Not that this colorway today was a risk. I knew I was going to create something I really liked. But in general, that is my philosophy when it comes to dyeing yarn. I am not planning on unraveling this blank today, mainly because I personally think part of the fun of a sock blank is seeing that reveal. And this is where I tend to get a little bit torn. From a video perspective, unraveling this would show what the finished yarn looks like, and so that gives a very nice end to a video. But as a customer, I would prefer to buy the yarn in the blank form because then I can see the way the colors are placed and have a better idea in my head of how it might work up once it's unraveled, which will vary a lot depending on what you're making and the gauge and things like that. Um, but I think that, you know, there's something to be said from having the blank and listing the blank in the shop. I do consider my primary job and my primary focus as chemnets to be creating these videos versus doing things for my shop. However, I do sometimes need to take into consideration what might be more sellable so, so that way I can help support my business. So if you would like to help support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, first of all, please subscribe. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. But also, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I have hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos, and sometimes we're working for special events, and so there could be mystery pre-sales and other fun things. And so it is really a great way that you can help support the content here. I do also have a few pattern PDFs in my shop, and so if you don't need any more yarn, which is something I understand, uh, purchasing patterns is another great way to help support the content here, or you can go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. I'll have links to everything down in the video description. Ellen Kravietz, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I, again, really love this sock blank and hope that you're going to have so much fun unraveling it. I think that one thing I didn't mention here is that you could unravel this blank into two skeins. But another fun thing to do with these blanks is to knit from them directly. And so then you're seeing the way that the colors are pulled on the blank translate directly into, say, socks or mittens or a matched pair of whatever it is you're making. And so working from it directly is just another really, really fun perk to the blanks. I have a lot of different videos where I have unraveled the blanks that I dyed. And so uh, go and check out some of my sock blank playlists if you wanna see how different type of blanks unravel and more of the type of modeling that you can see from unraveling something like this. But when you look at a blank like this, you can sort of read it, not in how exactly it'll translate, but you can see based on where colors are more concentrated than others, how, okay, if I want more purple near the toes, I should start at this end or things like that. So it does give you a little bit of a feel of how the colors may be balanced, even if you don't under, can't visualize looking at it, how exactly it might knit up. But anyway, Ellen, thank you so much for being my lab partner. And if you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner or last minute lab partner, there is more information in the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I filmed a lot of the footage for this video during a live stream, a behind the scenes live stream where viewers could hang out with me while I was working on some episodes of Dye Pot Weekly. And over the course of that whole video, I had a yarn mop that I used to wipe excess dye from various projects but mostly this one, because this was the project where I had the most dry dye powder on my fingertips. And this yarn mop, which I think is Swish DK, 100% Superwash Merino, is fun and beautiful. Like, I think that it is a fun yarn in its own right, but I think that I want to over dye it for another video. Uh, not because I don't like it, <laughs> I do actually like it, but it's just, since it, 
I don't think I really featured it in this video or any of the other videos I was filming. I think using it and starting out with, hey, what else can you do if you create a colorway of yarn that you're not a fan of? Sometimes I say over dye it with black, so let's do it. So I think that's what I'm considering. Yeah, anyway, I just wanted to show like the yard mop. I think that this combination of colors would be as gorgeous as a mop, um, including with the couple other colors that we have on here. It's just overall, uh, there wasn't as much dye that I was going into, so I didn't get quite as much coverage as I usually like for a yarn mop on here, which is the reason why I'm considering over dyeing it. And really, I think I'm gonna over dye it. <laughs> so stay tuned for that video. Or maybe that video already came out, and if it did, I'll link to it below. The order in which videos come out on the channel is not the same as the order that they're filmed. Uh, usually I try to keep things in an order if there's something I film that I want to come out before a follow-up kind of video, but other times the schedule ends up being that that doesn't happen. And so I, I try. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.